Okay, that sounds like a plan. So, Mr. Melvin, you got to stay here. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Super good job. All right, are we going? All right. So, hi guys. I got Melvin here with me. And uh, we've reached a point in this training where I would say he's completed the fundamentals. He's overcome all the basic challenges. He's learned the basic tools. I'm not going to say that he is getting 90s or 100s and everything. But what I will say is that he is he, he's showing really like A plus in a lot of areas. And then the areas that he struggled in, he's making tremendous improvements. I'm going to send you guys a video. I, I, OK, so when you're watching this video, you've already seen a video from when we were doing outside work with Laura. And you'll see in that video how he gets everything. Now, he's, come o he's gotten over the whole sadness about the down and all that stuff. And now what we're going to start to do, we've already, at, we've already done a couple sessions of the e-collar, just conditioning him to understand that the e-collar is a, a, a communication that's coming from us. And when you feel it, it look to me and, and you're going to get rewarded. And it's, he's about average when it comes to a dog understanding it. And we take our sweet time. He's feeling it at a level like seven or eight out of a hundred. So we'll, we'll develop that over the next few days and we'll bring you guys up to speed. But I just wanted to take a minute to just give you guys uh, a little bit of like what to expect the next week coming up, right? So now he understands like what his name means to me, that means to become engaged with us, whoever's calling the name. Come means to come. He has feelings about a lot of things, but he's learning that his feelings are not the end of everything, right? So um, if he feels scared, he, he understands like he still has objectives to do. And when he does it, that there's going to be a reward. He is about 50% of the time a dog that'll take some food and 50% of the other time, he'd rather just have your approval and your pets. So to me, it, it doesn't make a difference. And, and some people like not using food anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. So, He's learned the basic moves and now it's time and he's learned confidence. And I talked about it earlier where, you know, there's this con it's like a seesaw, right? On one hand, you have technique and the other hand, you have emotion. And if you have a dog that is highly like super emotional and, and let's say in sadness, anger, happiness or anything, and it's maxing out on any one of those or all of the emotions, usually you'll find their dog's technique to be a good dog is, is like out of balance, right? Like the emotion is great, but the dog doesn't listen to anything. On the flip side of it, if you take away all the emotion and ooh, come back here, God, come right here. Good boy. Good job. Sit. Yes. Good shit. Um, down. And uh, what you'll find is like, if you have a dog that has all the technique, that usually means you've suppressed that dog to get all the technique and now the emotion part of the dog will suffer, right? Like they'll become like super sad or whatever. He is a dog. As I try to balance everything out, right? Like every single day I ask for a little bit more technique while I make sure that the emotional part doesn't get too down or too high or whatever, right? There's the sweet balancing act that's always going on. As you challenge one to learn some more, to do some more, to stay a little longer, to deal with the distraction a little better, right? For example, today he met uh, our bug spray guy that comes and does our property and he walked right up to the dude and said hello and the dude basically did a good job in being neutral and he was confident in how he met him and I didn't make a big fuss of it, but I, I was like, look at him go, you know? He didn't want to like turn around and go away right away. So my point is he's getting more confident, he's getting more technique, he absolutely is a sensitive dog. So when you ask for more, he always wants to take everything personally. I'm sure you guys have dealt with this throughout your experience with him. So I'm, not, I'm sure this isn't anything new. And what I'm helping him learn is, even though some things can be hard for you, it's going to be okay. And you still have to do it. And it's going to be okay. And once you see that you've done it, you're going to be fine. And that's kind of what I'm seeing is that 
and that's kind of why I needed those few extra days before you guys can come for your lesson, right? So like now, you'll see it in the video that we sent earlier, that he is super happy about all the emotion, all the stuff that he's doing. So what we're gonna do is get you guys involved. When you guys come on Monday or Tuesday or whatever that day was, when you guys show up, my job is to start with step one with you guys. So you guys can, so he can understand that like you guys all are gonna uphold the same reward system and the values, right? So we're gonna start there and then we're gonna slowly work our way through several lessons to get you guys basically synchronized to where we're at with him. Um, what I'm at with him now and what I'll be doing next week is now adding all these distractions and stuff, but at the same time, I'm gonna try to go and do it through the e-collar where it's less leash dependent and more voice and then responding to the e-collar, right? And um, we're gonna start to develop that basically. He takes every kind of correction very personally. Like if you were to say no to him, takes it personally. If you give him a leash correction, takes it personally. So when I see that in a lot of dogs, the e-collar will often be a, a source of a, a correction that they will kind of not take personally because it doesn't ha it's not directly attached to you, right? It's a form of communication. It's, they can feel it, but you don't have to raise your voice. You don't have to scold him. You don't have to chase him or, or tug on him or whatever, you know? So that, that's more to come, um, and we're, we're going to be developing it. If you guys have questions about that, we'll talk about it when you come, and uh, I'll probably make more video on, on the e-collar subject. Um, Laura, am I missing anything? Okay. All right, guys. If you have questions on what you guys see in the first video or what we talk about in this video, okay, let's go. And uh, whatnot, you let me know. Otherwise, thank you always for watching. See you guys later.